All right, first and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. All right, um, this video is, I'm not going to try and take up too much of time. This video is about, um, you know, whether or not brothers could carry weapons um, on the street or at camp or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? So... Um, we'll start here, uh, obviously, at Luke 22 and 36. Um, watch ye there. Um, I'm sorry. Then, then said unto him, uh, then said unto them, but now he that have a purse, let him take it and likewise his scrip. And he that have no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one, right? So really, I mean, if Christ is, or Yahweh Shai is telling um, brothers to arm themselves right there, that should be the end of the video. But we still have brothers out here that know the scripture and still make it some uh, issue about brothers carrying as if that's going to affect brothers or like, as if brothers lack faith because of it. All right. So I'm going I'm to just go to Psalms real quick. Um, I'm going to go to Psalms um, 44 and 5 real quick. Um, because, look, man, just because brothers have weapons, listen, we're vastly outgunned by Esau. Um, and, you know, they got knives guns, missiles, rocket launchers, everything you can think of, right? Just because a brother has a pistol on them to um, prevent anything from happening to him or his brothers or um, brothers or sisters that might be around just looking, right? Um, it's, it's nonsense and brothers make this an issue and it shouldn't be one, right? This is Psalms uh, 55, or Salakia 44 and 5. Through, through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name, through thy name will we thread them under that rise up against us. For I will, for I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Right, because we know at the end of the day, the Lord. And the Lord is the one that's going to save us, right? Yahweh Shai and the angels is the one that's going to redeem us in the end, right? Um, so this is this is not about whether or not we can save ourselves. It's simply for protection. We had a situation at camp down here in Phoenix, right? Where I, I, brothers, well, me personally, I was handling a situation that was behind us. Right, it's a bunch of chaos, um, drug addicts, alcoholics. It's dangerous out there at camp for you though for those of you that don't go out to camp. Um, it's not the safest place to be on the street, right? And especially telling people uh, what they ought not to do. All right, so people really don't take heed to that. And then you got other nations, which in this situation that's what it was. Ed two Edomites walked up behind me while I was dealing with a Gadai sister. And um, apparently the Edomite and the Edomite's wife, who was also the guy, all right, his wife spit on us from what I understand. So brothers hit her or push her or something like that. I don't recall. I don't know what exactly happened, but either way, um, they started it, brothers in the crowd hit the woman, then, uh, the guy went to her defense, was getting beat up, and that's when I turned around, because I heard a ruckus, and I seen a brother, you know what I'm saying, punch the dude, and then he pulls out a knife, right? Now, mind you, this whole time, they started to fight. So he pulls out a two, three inch blade and he was gonna 
punch your brother with it. He had it like in a keychain, but it was like wrapped around his fingers, right? So he's going to punch the brother now. For you that don't really know nothing about knives and stuff like that, it only takes two to three inches of that knife to hit a brother's heart. And it'll feel just like a punch, right? A regular, like you just got punched in your chest. And then 30 seconds later, you drop dead, right? So dealing with knives is a dangerous thing in general. So what ended up happening is I seen him pull his knife. He didn't realize I had a gun because I concealed carry, right? You don't see you don't you don't see the gun, but it's on my hip, right? So I pull my gun out and then the guy instantly freezes like he had the fear of death on his face. You could see he was he knew he was about to die at that point, right? But had I not pulled that gun he could have seriously injured another brother because the knife was so small. Majority of people didn't even see it. People actually called the police on me to say I pulled a gun out on somebody, but they didn't see the knife that he was carrying. You understand? Because it was that small, right? But small knife can be just as deadly as a long knife. It doesn't have to be a long knife, right? But the point is, the gun is there for protection, right? If I'm able to save a brother or a sister or whoever the case may be while we on the streets, then that's what's gonna happen, right? But our faith is not in a gun. Our faith is in the most high God, right? And um, without me even going to it, obviously Proverbs says, um, man's going to the Lord, right? So, that also means our actions, right? What we do, right? Um, if he didn't want me having that gun on me, I wouldn't have had that gun on me. And the brother could have been severely injured, right? So brothers that make this an issue is nonsense because brothers is not walking around like they about to fight the U.S. government or they about to fight, um, or they about to fight um, the police departments or something like that, right? So. Again, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reread um, Psalms 44 and 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. All right? But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. Right? So the Most High going to deal with everybody at the end of the day. But my, my pistol was a tool that day to help save another brother's life, right? So, and I, and I know people are gonna say, okay, well, you went to loop, right? To say, well, the guns and all of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was shy, um, they tell brothers to sell guns, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Because he, when P, he rebuked Peter, right? Let's go to that. Um, we're gonna go to John, because I like John better. Um, John's account better uh, when it comes to um, that that story, right? So we're going to go to John chapter 18. Okay, this is John chapter 18, verse 10. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant, right? And cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Myacus, or Mal Malchus, so like you. Um, then said Yahweh unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath. Okay, so if you go there, just understand, Christ didn't tell him to throw the sword away. He said, "Put it back in your, put it back in this, this place, put it back in its sheath, right? Um, the cup which my father have given me, shall I not drink it, right? Because he was dealing with some, like that's not the time to use it, right? Because he, he he's he's letting them know, like you already know what I got to go through. It's gonna happen regardless, but." You know what I'm saying? He didn't tell Peter to throw the knife away 
or the sword or anything. He said, put it back in its place, man. Put it back in its sheath, right? So brothers got to get out this over-righteousness that they be grasping onto. Like we didn't take whole villages, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. You know, um, and and um, take it by violence, man. Okay, that's uh, Deuteronomy. Let me go twenty. Um, okay, this is Deuteronomy twenty. What verse I need? Uh, all right, I'm going to start at Deuteronomy um, 20 and 12. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when, the, and when Yahweh thy power have delivered it unto thy hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the woman and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which Yahweh thy power hath given thee. Right? So, the Most High has let us know, like, yeah, it's going to be times where you're gonna you're gonna be using the sword to take whatever land you need to take, right? Israel did have an army. Brothers act like we got the Maccabean revolt, right? Brothers act like brothers was just out there giving precepts during times of war, man. Right? Y'all gotta come out of that nonsense, man. Okay? Um let me let me give you some prophecy, man. This is Leviticus um, 26. All right. Some of y'all know where I'm probably going already. Leviticus 26 and 6. All right. All right. This is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 6. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none, okay, let's lock it, let me, let me go back over, all right, and I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, because this is talking about the future, meaning lie down, we're going, you know what I'm saying, we're going to be at rest, right, and none shall make you afraid, right, because at this time, we, it's, it's going to be cool. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies. So we're going to chase our enemies in this day. And they shall fall before you by the sword. It's not talking about a Bible, bro. Okay? It's talking about a physical sword. Okay? And five of you shall chase an hundred. And a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Meaning we're going to be putting them to death. Right? And your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. Right? So brothers got to come out of this mind state that, oh, well, we we just, you know, we, we got to be soft men and just spiritual only, right? Um, we, we're supposed to be austere men, right? We're supposed to be just like Christ, man. Christ was austere. He told brothers to go get weapons, man, right? Um, no, I don't recall me doing it, but let's, let's go to Deuteronomy too because brothers act like whatever Christ say is just a, of opinion sometimes, right? Christ told brothers, if you if you don't have a sword, sell your garment and buy one. This is uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18, right? Um, 
I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. All right. So if the most high commands him, that's a commandment. Right. So anything Yahweh Shai says is a commandment. So when Yahweh Shai says, sell your garment and buy a sword, that's a commandment at that point, bro. Period. There's no way y'all can get around it. I mean, you can you you can argue a couple points, but at the end of the day, listen, like I said, we had the Maccabean revolt. We had um, Peter uh, carrying the blade on him. It don't it don't matter, man. You can try and get around it all you want to. We've always carried weapons, right? Um, let me see what else can I, what else I'm gonna go to real quick here. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, let's go to Judith, man. Matter of fact, that's a good book to go to. Let me go to Judith real quick. So I'm going to start at verse 4. Um, this is Judah chapter 13, verse 4. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, meaning everybody had left um, the room, and it was just her and all her friends. Okay? Neither little nor great. Then Judah, standing up by the bed, said in, in her heart, O Yahweh, thy power of all power, Look at this present upon the works of my hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. For now is the time to help thine inheritance and to execute mine enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are rising against us. Right? Then she came to the pillar of the bed which was at Holofernes' head and took down his function from thence and approached to his bed and took hold of the hair of his head and said, Strengthen me, O Yahweh, power of Israel, this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with her might and she took away his head from him. Okay? So, Judith out here then took a whole man head off, man. Right? She used the sword. Carnality is not always a bad thing. It depends on the situation, right? But she did it for the better good of her people to, to win a war, right? And Honestly, there's nothing wrong with carrying a sword in the Bible. Even our, it's a perfect example here. Even our woman used a sword to kill an enemy, man. Like y'all gotta stop the over righteousness, man. It, it's it's over and done with. All right, y'all be acting like y'all in the Christian church sometimes, man. Okay. Um. I'm going to go to one more spot. Um, this is a... Uh, let me see. Go to 1 Samuel. Chapter 15. Okay. All right. 
This is Samuel chapter 15 from the top. Samuel also said unto Saul, Yahweh sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of Yahweh, thus saith Yahweh of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel, and ass. Right, so the most high, like when we read in Deuteronomy 20, right, he, he said, kill the heathen, but take the, you know, kill the heathen men, right, and take the spoil of war, right, which would be the women and the cattle and everything else, right, the riches. But here in 1 Samuel, he hated Amalek so much, he said, forget all of that, kill everything, wipe them completely out, right? So we weren't doing that with scriptures, right? He went, he said go kill everything. So obviously we used weapons at this time too, right? We've always had weapons on us. We always use weapons on us and we're always going to have weapons on us. You brothers need to stop making this a thing where brother uh, are trying to shame brothers for protecting themselves out there on the street. That, that has nothing to do with a lack of faith, man. All right? And honestly, it may save somebody's life. Okay? Uh, which that must be what Yahweh wanted at that point. Because it wouldn't happen if it wasn't of the Lord. Period. All right? And with that, I would like to say, call Halal Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and Shalom.